Jesus, you brought me all the way, and you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior, I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way, and you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior, I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way, and you carry my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior, I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way, and you carry my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior, never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way, and you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior, I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way, and you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior, I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Well, God bless you. Good morning, uh, Deacon and Sister Wilson. Good morning, Sister Young. God bless you, Duchess. Good morning, Sister Allen. God bless you, Anicia. Alicia, rather. God bless you, Kamisha. Praise the Lord, Angela. God bless you, Sister Roberts. God bless you, Sister Maxwell. Praise the Lord, Sister Cheek. God bless you, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Rickenbacker. God bless you, Sister Johnson Walker. Praying for you and all the church family in Kenneth Square. God bless you, Sister Kathy. Good morning, Sister Pryor. God bless you, Alante. Good morning, Mother Holman. God bless you, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Malloy. God bless you. God bless you, Felicia. Good morning, Crystal. Good morning, Margaret. God bless you, Kim. Good morning, Mother Street. God bless you, Mother Nicholson. Praise the Lord, Marlette. God bless you, Sister Golden. Good morning, Sister Giles, Elder Henderson, God bless you, sir. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Matthews. Good morning, Minister Scott. God bless you, Margie. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister um, Parker. God bless you. Lady Staten, good morning, Sister Dykes. God bless you, Sister Walker. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Lydia. Good morning, Missionary Hamilton. God bless you, Alicia. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Polk. God bless you, Tamika. God bless you, Sister Dorset. Good morning, Elder Bailey. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Coleman. Good morning, Sister Gladys. God bless you, Katrina. Praise the Lord to you. Good morning, Jeannie. God bless you. Good morning. Dion, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Bailey. God bless you, Xavier. Good morning, Mother Owens. God bless you. Praise the Lord to you. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness and and to see the blessings of God that are manifested through prayer. God impacting the lives of people because people are praying. God touching the lives of people. God strengthening people on every side because we are indeed praying, looking to God, expecting God, and watching God work on our behalf. And I thank God for the testimonies that come in each day of people who are being healed, people who are recovering from sicknesses, people who are um, seeing their family members drawn closer to the Lord Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, just God moving and doing what we know God is able to do. I encourage everybody, everybody, whatever you're dealing with, please, please, my brother, my sister, don't stop praying. Don't stop looking to God. Don't stop expecting God to touch and deliver your life. As always, if you have a prayer request, you can share that. If you're on Facebook, add it to the chat right here, or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can also add your request to the chat, or you can direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD. And for everybody on YouTube, everybody on the conference call, and just anybody that wants to use it, you can use the text line, and you can text in your prayer request at 336 336- Five six seven five three five eight. That number is three three six five six seven five three five eight. You can text in your prayer request, and we will take them before the Lord because we are believing God to do amazing and great things in the lives of people. I want to go further now in the book of James, and I want to move us to James chapter three, and this is another very needful topic. We spent a number of days talking about faith and works and the need for faith to be activated or to be applied to the lives. Now we're going to move to one that I think everybody, and I'm I'm saying everybody, has either um, been victimized by or you have perpetrated all right. And, and some of us have done both. Let's just be honest about that. And that and we're talking about the tongue today. So I want to read from James chapter three and bear with me. I want to read verses one through eleven, verses one through eleven. Um, we won't cover it all today, but I want to read it all to just put it into your hearing. James chapter three and verse one. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a small, very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and set up on fire the course of nature and is set on the fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed of blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Doth a fountain send forth the same place, sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, eat either a vine figs? So can no man, so can no fountain rather, both yield salt water and fresh. And let me just stop there. And I want to talk about the tongue today. I want to talk about this tongue because this is probably the greatest struggle that most of us, and and I'm including myself in this conversation, most of us have, is how do we manage, how do we bridle, how do we control our tongues? How do we manage our tongues? Because for so many of us, this is this, this is the hard thing. This is the hard thing. We can do a lot of things, even as it relates to holy living and holy lifestyle. We do a lot of things, but what we struggle with is our tongue, is our tongue. And, and, and that's what James really deals with. And I would say the apostle James and the book of Proverbs probably do more to talk about the tongue, how we speak, the power of our words, 
the power of our speech, the blessings we can bring into people's lives through speech, and also the negativity that we can release through the wrong kinds of speech. He opens chapter three by making a statement, be not many masters. And, and what that really means is um, that those of us who are teachers, preachers of the gospel need to be careful um, what we teach. We need to be very careful what we articulate. We need to be very careful what we share because it has impact. I was telling the ministers um, the other day at my church that, you know, in the early days of my pastorate at Refuge, I was in prayer one night. I was at the church alone and I was on my face praying and the Holy Spirit stopped me in the middle of my prayer and said to me very clearly, very forcefully, that I had to give an account for every word that I would preach from across that pulpit. And the Holy Spirit said, because people are going to make life decisions based upon what you say. And I just stopped. I was stunned. I heard clearly what the Spirit was saying to me, that there is a greater accountability. I know a lot of us want to preach and teach. And, you know, and, and in all honesty, some of us are called of God and some people call themselves. I'm just going to say it for what it is. Some people have been called of God. They've been called to preach the gospel, to teach the word, to edify, to exhort, to build the body. And some call themselves because from the, from, from, from the audience, the pulpit, the stage looks like a powerful place. People are listening to you. People are responding to you. People are building, um, to some degree, the ego of the preacher, of the teacher, of the evangelist, of the bishop, of the apostle, because they're listening to them. And some people crave that pulpit because they simply want validation. They want to be heard. They want to be seen. Um, one, one of my uh, dear friends called it the magical stage, that people go there because they want to feel as if they are important. And they, so they go to the pulpit. But you need to understand that when you step stand up to declare the word of God, you receive a greater accountability for what you say. Because people are going to make decisions and they're going to say, the preacher said so-and-so, the bishop said, the first lady, the missionary, the deacon, the mother, the Sunday school teacher, they said so-and-so. And so, and so that, that word condemnation just means there's a greater accountability to those of us that stand and declare and share the word of God. Those that will prophesy, those that will edify, those that will speak, trust me, you are going to carry a greater responsibility because people are going to make decisions based upon the things that you say. So he says in verse two, for in many things we offend all. People get offended by any number of things. And if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Because believe it or not, most of the offenses is not what people do. It is what people say. More offenses, in my opinion, I don't have a stat on this, but more offenses, more offenses are, are, are perpetrated, more offenses are put out, more offenses are created by what people say more so than what they do. And he makes that point. He makes that point very powerfully. And then he goes on. The same is a perfect man. You are a mature Christian. You are moving in the direction of godliness if you are able to control your tongue. If you are able not to offend people. Because you know what? Sometimes we offend people and we don't realize we're being offensive. Sometimes, and I'll say this, some of our offenses is not malicious, but it is insensitive. That we 
we really don't think about other people before we start talking. And so it's not always malicious. Now, some of it is malicious. Some of it is directly designed to undermine, to hurt, to damage an individual. But some of what people say is simply being insensitive to the needs of others, especially if you have not been through a similar experience. You have to be very careful and people will throw this out very often and say, I know how you feel. Well, if you have not lived that experience, you cannot say to people, I know how you feel. You can say, I feel sorry for you. You can say, I'm praying for you. But if you have not had the experience, how can you really say, I know how you feel? If if somebody loses their spouse and you're still married and your spouse is alive and well, you cannot go to the funeral and tell that widow or that widow were, I know how you feel. You don't know. You can say, I can imagine. You can say, I, I, I'm, I, I'm feeling your pain and I'm, I'm believing God for your strength. But if you have not had the experience, do not be insensitive in your remarks. Be not be, do not be insensitive in your dialogue. He goes on to talk about the tongue in relation to the body. And he uses a couple of very strong examples in verse three. He says, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about the whole body. A horse is a huge animal. A horse is a powerful animal and a horse is a dangerous animal. But when you're taming a horse, when you're trying to control a horse, you put the bridle on the horse's head and you put the, a metal piece in his mouth. It's a metal bar that goes all the way to the back of the horse's mouth. So when you pull on the, on the rein from the left side, it turns the horse left. When you pull on the rein from the right side, it turns the horse right. When you pull both the reins back, it's stops the horse from moving. That that one piece of metal in the mouth of this powerful animal is controlling the movement, the speed, is controlling everything about this horse because of this bridle or because of rather the bit that is in the horse's mouth. He uses the example of a ship. There are I've had the privilege of being on a cruise and I've, I've looked on the diagrams or I've looked on the pictures and this, this gigantic ship of 10, 12 floors of ship. All right. People in the cabins, people on the decks, people in the pools, people in all of the activities. And yet that gigantic ship has a small control room at the top of the ship. And there's one wheel that's maybe bigger than a steering wheel, but it's just a wheel. But when that captain or when that navigator or the helmsman turns the wheel, the entire ship turns to the right or turns to the left or circles in place. That wheel or stops movement, that wheel controls the movement of of this mighty ship. In the Bible days, the ships were moved by, powered by the wind. Now they're powered by fuel. But however it was powered, it was controlled by that tiny helm, that little wheel that turns and moves the ship from the right to the left and causes it to go in order. He says, look at, look at these two examples. He says, but yet, even so, the tongue is a little member. Your tongue is about this big. Your tongue is about this big, but yet it is, it boasteth great things out of your mouth. You tell people what you're going to do, what you think you're going to do, what you think you're capable of. It boasts. Oh God, the tongue says so many things sometimes that are just not true. Oh, I can lift this and I can do this and I can write this and I have these gifts and these abilities. That's your tongue boasting because your tongue is tied. Let me say it. Your tongue is tied to your flesh. Your tongue is tied to your flesh. Your tongue is tied to your pride. Your tongue is tied to your arrogance. And trust me, that tongue says a lot of things. That tongue throws out a lot of information that sometimes just simply is not true. That tongue just says some things. And that's why in verse 6, he says, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You can take you can literally take a match and you can burn down your whole house. If there's enough inflammatory materials in your house, just a match, 
Just a spark, just a strike can literally burn down your entire house. Just a match. And that's why when the fire um, marshals or inspectors come in, they look for the cause of the fire and they'll find a match. They'll find a spark in a wire. They'll find something relatively small that created a huge inferno. You, uh, Many of these forest fires that are raging across the country and around the world are coming because of just a little bit of fire. It wasn't a law. It didn't start out as a flamethrower. It didn't start out as an inferno. It was the strike of a match. It was something small, something minor. And guess what? It created a huge fire. Sometimes just one word. Sometimes just one sentence, sometimes just one comment can create a huge fire. How many of you know this in arguments that just, you know, you were having a discussion, you were talking, you were dialoguing, you may have even been laughing, but that one word, that one remark, that one comment creates a huge inferno of anger and tension and stress. That's the power of the tongue when it operates negatively. That's the power of your tongue. How many of us have started fires with our mouths? How many of us? God knows I have. I'm, this is transparency day. God knows I have. Just not thinking before I spoke. Not being cognizant of how what I said would be received. Not being aware of and, and sometimes acting in my sarcasm. Let me be honest. Sometimes acting in anger. Sometimes acting because I was mad about something. So I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm going to get my point across and just creating all kinds of unnecessary drama that came simply out of the tongue. That small, tiny member, that small, tiny element, you know, and th th this is a good analogy. Your tongue is smaller than your brain, which means you ought to do more thinking and less talking. I'm going to say that again. Your tongue is smaller than your brain. So you ought to do more thinking and less talking, more thinking. Think about the impact. Think about the, the relevance. Think about the damage it'll do. Taste your words. I'm not done. We're just getting started. Taste your words. Taste, uh, el analyze the impact of what you say because that one remark, that one word, that one phrase can create an inferno of anger and bitterness and bad feelings. It can create all of that. There, there are people saying they weren't able to get in the morning prayer. I don't know what's happening because I see 250 other people that are in prayer, but some people are texting that they weren't able to get into prayer. And I don't know why they weren't able to get into prayer, but we'll, we'll share it so they'll be able to go back and watch. But that one thing, that one element can create such havoc in the lives of people. It can create such havoc in people's lives. And so we have to be careful that we mind our tongue, that we mind our tongue, that we mind our tongue, because it is having an impact in the lives of people. We're going to come back to this tomorrow. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Gracious God, I love you. I thank you. I adore you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your love. Lord, you have been so very good to us that we bless your name. We adore your name. We honor your name, God. Hallelujah. Hey, God, for all that you've done. We lift our mouths in thanksgiving. We offer you the fruit of our lips and the sacrifice of our praise, God, because you have been so good. Oh, God, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning, getting us prepared to join this cadre of saints from everywhere, God, to be able to talk with you and to share with you, God, what you've done for us and how you've blessed us, and even, God, to share our needs. 
our problems, our concerns, our conditions with you because we are trusting you, God, to deliver today. We are trusting you to open a door, to make a way, to create, my God, miracle signs and wonders for somebody today. Lord God, I'm praying for every name that's on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book today. We are praying and believing you for what we know you are able to do. God, we're praying for the saints that are traveling on their way to Greensboro, to the International Convocation, some by air, some by train, some by car, some by bus, but God, cover them and protect them and keep them safe, oh God, in their journey. We're praying today, God, for everybody. We're praying for Juliet Johnson, God, that you would release, my God, a financial miracle for her. We're praying for Kim Johnson, for the James family. We're praying for Christian. We're praying for Miss Isabella. We're praying for Travis, God, that you would provide and open the door for him to have that job that he needs. God, we're praying for Juliet's, oh God, grandchildren. We're praying for Mother Johnson. We're praying for Cammie and the Gates family, for the Harrell family, for the Deserve family, for the Roundtree family. We're praying for Jason Brockett today. We're praying for the incarcerated, and we're praying for those that work with the incarcerated. God, keep them safe. Cover them in your precious blood. Oh God, and make what they do impactful to the lives of people. We're praying for Sarah Corden. We're praying for youth everywhere, God. You Youth everywhere. God, remember our young people. We're praying, my God, for seniors everywhere. We're praying for caregivers everywhere, God. We're praying for those residents and workers in the Somerset Woods Nursing, oh God, and Rehab Facility. We're praying for our Asia Hutchinson. We're praying for the families, oh God, of so many shooting victims, people who have lost their lives, God, their families grieving, searching for answers in Uvalde, in Buffalo, in Tulsa, all over the country, all over the world. World, God. We're praying, oh God, that you would touch them. We're praying for Jean Harrell Long. We're praying for Minister Jimmy Lee. We're praying for Marion Green today. We're praying for Elijah Williams, for Jaden, for Joshua Thomas, for the Whitehead family, for June Harrell Hutchinson. Oh God, we're praying to Janelle, rather, Harrell Hutchinson. We're praying for Dr. and Sister Haywood and their family. We're praying for Patrick Williams. We're praying for the Coleman family, for Tori Watkins, for Kathy, for Eric. We're praying for the Graves family, the Amazon family, God. We're praying for the Jones family, the Watson family, the Mingo family. We're praying for Diana Williams. We're praying for Deacon Willie and Mother Barbara Davis today. We're praying for Sister Lillian Adams. We're praying for Melody White. We're praying for Jason. We're praying for Quintasia today. We're praying for missionary Gail Leah and her family. We're praying for Zach today. Every name on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every name in the chat, in messenger, in by email, by text. And Lord, we're lifting up the unspoken request today because God, we're praying, my God, that you would deliver, that you would work miracles, that you would open doors in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we're praying today for the sick everywhere. We're praying for healing for DeWanda Parker, Halliburton, God. We're praying, my God, for healing, my God, for Deacon Fred Truitt, for Tiana Hopkins, for Cynthia Lewis today, for Miracle Destiny, for Natasia on Andrea today, for Deacon Phillips, God. We're praying for Sister Lillian Adams. We're praying for Shelton. We're praying for Brother Clyde Staten today. We're praying, my God, for Brenda Parker, for Kenyatta, for Val. We're thanking you, O oh God, for keeping Bishop. Hallelujah. Mac Vincent today. Continue that healing process. We pray. We thank you for healing Bishop Gregory Wilder. We thank you, my God. Oh, God, for Bishop Oh, God, Hall Leon Harrell. Touch and heal, God. We're praying for Bishop Leroy Joseph today. Everybody that's sick everywhere, we lift them up before you. We're praying for Brother Wiggins. We're praying for Brother and Mother Sherrod. For Deacon and Mother Garland today. We're praying, my God, for recovery for everybody that has a need, God. Remember Dr. Oh, God, and Sister Hayward and Dr. Hayward's mother. Remember Mother Jill, Mother Pride today, God. Remember, my God, Mother Carter, in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, Remember, my God, Mother Chambers today. We know that you're a healer. Remember, my God, Brother Matt today, God. Continue to touch and strengthen his body. Everybody everywhere, my God, that's dealing with a sickness, we're praying for help today. Remember, my God, Pastor Carr. Remember, Minister Carr today. My God, remember, hallelujah, El 
Elder, hallelujah, Tyson. Remember Elder Smith now and cause strength to come to them in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for sick people everywhere. God, remember Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff. God, Lord, with your healing virtue, remember, my God, hallelujah, Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons. God, strengthen them as only you can. Help them, God, today as only you can. I'm praying, my God, that you would remember Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. I'm praying that you would remember, my God, Sister Pope today. My God, with your healing virtue, remember, oh God, hallelujah, Mother Rose today. Everybody that needs healing in their bodies, we pray for them now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we're praying today that you would remember them. Remember Marlette. Remember Maurice today. Remember, my God, every person. Oh God, remember Chris today. Remember, oh God, Tony today. Remember Kim, Lord. Oh God, with your healing touch now. Lord, walk into every hospital today. Oh God, go into the COVID ward, the cancer ward. Go into the ICU unit. Go into the dialysis unit, God. Go into rehab. Go into nursing homes. God, even go into hospice because we know that you're a healer and bring your healing virtue, God. Anybody watching this prayer today, I'm praying, God, that you would touch them. I'm praying that you would heal them now in the mighty, mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying today for your grace and strength, Lord, upon the grieving, upon the bereaved. Lord, the spirit of grief is so heavy and so many people, God, continue to pass away and leave families devastated. But we're praying, God, that you would help them, that you would strengthen them. Remember the Howard family. Remember BG's family, the Scott family today. Remember Ashley Holt today. Remember the Kramer family and the greater Emmanuel Temple family and the saints in Pennsylvania. God, remember Jack Simpson today. Remember, my God, the Kimber Shaw family. God, remember Deacon Arnold Riley and the Riley family, God, today. Remember Sister Stephanie Marbury, oh God, and her family today. Remember TJ, my God, and her family. Everybody, everywhere that's grieving, we're praying for grace today. Remember, my God, the Bonhams, the Taylors, the Lloyds. Remember, my God, the Carter family, the Giles family. Remember the Meadows family, the Perkins family today. God, strengthen them. Strengthen the Moyers today in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember them in a special way. My God, we're praying today that you would strengthen grieving hearts everywhere. God, God, give them grace to stand. Remember, my God, the Dockeries and the White family. God, remember them. Remember Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Remember Margie today and the McLean, Melvin, and Street families. God, strengthen them now. Remember, oh God, right now the Ransom family. God, remember Brenda, my God, and the Alan McNeely, oh God, Carlton family. God, I pray your grace upon them, oh God, in the loss of Brandon. God, we're praying today, God, hallelujah, for Shauna Monique and the Gary Porter family. We're praying, my God, for the Alan Williams family. Strengthen, my God, Trell and Ryan. We're praying for the Clark family. God, keep, my God, Tommy and Michelle. People everywhere that are grieving. Oh, God, strengthen them. My God, the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds. God, give them grace and strength, God. The Washington Fields family. My God, the Bankses, the Winninghams. Lord, touch and strengthen them now. Oh, God, my God, remember the Middletons. Remember the Taylors in a special way. God, give grace and strength because we know that you're able. God, remember, my God, the Mannix, the Boudrums. Remember the Felix family, the Sapata family. Remember, my God, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherin family. God, remember my God. Oh God, everybody that's grieving everywhere. God, the Briggs family. God, the Josephs. My God, the Phillips family. God, give grace and give touch to every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every grieving child, every grieving parent, every grieving sibling. Remember the Austins, the Davises, the Harbisons, the Adams family. God, with your grace, God, touch and strengthen now. God, I pray for the body of Christ today. I pray for the body of Christ. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. I pray for every <clears throat> bishop and elder, every first lady, every oh God, pastor's child, every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon, every young person in the church. I pray today, my God, for every musician, singer, and psalmist that you would strengthen the church on every side. Oh God, we repent today for all of the sins of our tongues. Oh God, things that we have said that was unkind, things that we have said that was ungodly godly. Things that we have said that was hurtful, God. I pray your forgiveness now. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, help the church to say the right things. Help the church, oh God, to speak as oracles of God. Help the church, my God, to say only 
that which is edifying and encouraging to the lives of people. Oh God, and when we correct to do it in love and not in malice. God, I'm praying today that you would strengthen the church. I'm praying, my God, for first responders, essential workers everywhere, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I'm praying for school employees and students everywhere. I'm praying for everybody that works to help another person in a hospital, in a nursing home, in a rest home, a private caregiver, God, in a store, in an office, in a bank, in a clinic. God, cover and protect them. As these numbers go up and down, God, I pray for your protection to be upon the people today. Lord God, keep those that are uninfected, uninfected. And God, heal those that have been infected. Give them strength, God. Lord, deliver them from the long-term effects in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as you're healing sicknesses, as you're healing injuries, my God, heal broken spirits. And God, heal this land, this land that is so sick with sin and perversion and ungodliness. God, heal the land. Restore life. Restore strength today. Heal the land from sin. Heal the land from hatred. Heal the land from violence, from racism, from prejudice, from sexism. Heal the land, God, and let the church be the sight, light of the world, the light of the world, rather, and the salt of the earth. I pray your blessings, God, upon the people today. I pray for the convocation, that it would be a spiritual gathering, oh God of believers, and that your glory would rest upon the people of God. Bless us today. Keep us under your blood, protect and guide us, God. And as you do all of this, we give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on and give God glory right now. Everybody on this line, let's give him praise. Come on, that's right, hallelujah. Let's thank God, let's thank God, let's thank God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is my declaration for today. Lord, forgive the sins of my tongue. Lord, forgive the sins of my tongue. Everything that I have said that was not edifying. That was not affirming. That was not strengthening. That was not in godly love corrective. Everything that I've said with my tongue, Lord, forgive me. Everybody I've hurt, everybody I've chopped up, everybody I've gossiped about, everybody I've talked about unkindly, Lord, forgive the sins of my tongue. Forgive the sins. Because you can't go forward until you acknowledge your sins. You can't go higher. You can't go to the next place until you acknowledge the fact that I have done damage with my tongue. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a great start. You can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And thank God for those that are on the conference call. Please keep coming and please keep sharing the number so that others can be a part of this conference call and this prayer experience. You can also stay connected to our podcast. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all right? Seven days a week, and you can share it. And if this prayer service was a blessing, please share it because some people are, were texting me that they weren't able to get in. They couldn't find the prayer. So let's share it so that everybody gets this prayer today in the name of Jesus Christ. You can also stay connected through our radio broadcast that airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on Gregory God. Gospel.com every day, Monday through Friday on GregoryGospel.com at 1130. Let me thank everybody that sees and sows and shares with this ministry. God knows your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do. Thank you for the flood of birthday gifts. Thank you for the Monday sacrifices that people made. God is blessing because we are offering him the fruit of our substance and he promised to bless us. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift 
to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is Refuge Temple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, and you can make your gift there, Refuge Temple, NC.com. If you have the Givelify app, you can give on Givelify. Just search for Refuge Temple Burlington, and you'll see the picture of the church to know you're in the right place and make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App, and you can share there. But thank you for your giving, but thank you most of all for being a part of this prayer. God bless you and strengthen you. Keep coming to prayer. Keep encouraging others. Some people ask, was I going to do prayer throughout the convention? Yes. Every morning, before I go to the morning prayer downstairs, I'm going to do the online prayer, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ. So be with us every day. Let's trust God. Pray for me. By the grace of God, I am ministering in the convocation on Thursday night. On Thursday night, I am the Thursday night speaker. So please start praying for me now that God would anoint me and refresh me and give me a word that will bless the convocation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God be with you. God cover and keep you today. Keep praying for me. Keep praying for Lady Davis. Keep praying for my dad. Keep praying for our children. Keep praying for my sisters. Keep praying for my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Keep us before the Lord. Keep praying for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And keep praying one for another that the grace of God might cover us and God might bless the ministries to which we are connected. Have a fantastic day. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.